Girls, welcome to my channel where hobbies gonna die. So today we're going to talk about the books that I read in January. I read 14 books. Now that's not normal for me. I read half that normally, but I am in two buddy reads and one of those buddy reads we are reading one to two books a week for Goosebumps. And the other one I'm just reading one short story from Poe. A month but because of that I've read so much more. All of them have been horror by the way except for one. One of them was fantasy but I haven't read any nonfiction or poetry. There are some nonfiction books and poetry books that I intend to read this year but I kind of burnt myself out last year with reading so much nonfiction and, and stuff. I'm also like stacked with horror books, so there's going to be a lot more horror than anything else. I'm going to go through the books based on when I read them in the month, not any star rating or entering that. So the first book I read this month was Welcome to Dead House by R.L. Stein. The first Goosebumps. I really loved the atmosphere. The whole atmosphere of this book is just really creepy and, and I love creepy towns. So the fact that this was a creepy town that this happened in and everything else just really, I just really, really loved this book and it made me excited to read the rest of the Goosebumps. Unfortunately, as we go down the list, you're going to find out that my excitement has dwindled a bit for reasons. I got 4.5 stars on this. By the way, with any of these books, you can see a more in-depth, I mean, I don't write huge reviews in the first place, but you can see more in-depth reviews real time on my Goosebumps and my Goosebumps, my Goodreads <laughs> and Storygraph. So I have all my socials linked in the description all the time. So if you want to follow me on there to get real time what I'm reading, my progress, my reviews and stuff. You can go there for, for all of that. This is just going to be a brief run through of everything that I read. Also my Instagram, but I post my reviews there through the week. It's not real time. So we're on the next week where I read five books for the reading vlog. So one of those being Stay Out of the Basement. It was a three star for me. I have a soft spot for Flora kind of horror, which Stay Out of the Basement is all kind of revolved around. Something's happening in the basement, ooh, spooky, which isn't really giving anything away because I think it's in the synopsis and it's definitely on the cover. So you, you kind of get it, the idea that that's what's going on. I won't say any more than that. But the writing felt weaker to me compared to Welcome to Dead House. So I was kind of disappointed, but I was also like, eh, Arl Stein has written so many books. There's 62 books that we are personally going to be reading of all the Goosebumps. So... Obviously there's going to be some duds. Three stars isn't that bad either, to be truthfully honest. But just the writing style was kind of... And it wasn't necessarily spooky to me. Once you figure out the mystery of what's going on in the basement, I'm just like, oh, okay. So the next book that I read was Whichever Way You Go by Robert Harold. Again, I've already talked about this book in the reading vlog, so I won't say too much more about it here. It was another three star Again, average. It really pulled me in in the beginning. I was really sucked in. I was really, really interested. I like cult horror, which just kind of revolved around. But unfortunately, the ending kind of fell flat for me. So that's the reason why I kind of got an average rating. But I am curious enough in the story because there are, I think, two other short stories in that same storyline that I'm interested in reading. So I'll probably pick those up at some point. Right now I'm I'm too bogged down with arcs and book tours and all that to pick it up immediately. And then the next book that I read was The Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett, the first of the Discworld. Again, this was part of the reading vlog. This was my first five star of the year. I absolutely loved this. I love Terry Pratchett's writing style. Once you get used to it, Terry Pratchett's writing style is very whimsy, tongue in cheek. This is more classified as like satire, fantasy, you know, comedy fantasy, but I loved it. It was very, very nice to read something that's not horror. <laughs> Rincewind has a bad day is basically what this is about. Rincewind being a wizard, he is having a bad day 
and has very unfortunate adventures that he did not want to go on throughout this entire book. I feel like the first bit of it people are probably going to struggle with. It does get in the beginning very clunky trying to get used to Terry Pratchett's writing style if you're not used to Terry Pratchett's writing style and also the world building because he does a lot of world build building in the beginning. I mean pretty much all books do. I mean I guess they do it throughout but a lot of the chunk of world building is usually in the beginning. So that part does get a little hectic, very confusing at times. But once you get used to the flow and the adventure starts and everything else, this I really I really burned through this book. And that is the reason why I didn't drop the stars for the beginning because the rest of the book I was just like, oh my god, I really love this. I am excited to go through the rest of Discworld, which I had intended to read the next one for February. But I got inspired by... I have forgotten her name. I am so sorry. I'll put a clip here once I remember your name, but she is celebrating Halloween and that inspired me to pick out some romance and classic gothic horror to read for February. Here's the clip I promised. Her name is Lauren Happy Haunts Library. If I can keep the camera steady, I will actually at her down in the description. She's the one who got me into changing up what I'm going to read for February for Halloween. But she's also doing that. I'm sorry that I forgot. I Things get in my, out of my head and I'm having a very bad speech day today. As you will find out throughout this entire video, I probably should have waited to film any of this another day because I'm, I'm not... I'm not doing, I'm not doing good and I just realized I was filming the toilet in the background. That's fine, whatever. I'm right next to my bathroom. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video. So I pushed off reading the second of the Discworld for next month. I'll definitely do it for next month. Hopeful that the second one's going to be great because I'm already having issues with series with goosebumps. And then the next one that I read of the five books for that week is Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. If you've seen my reading vlog, you know how I feel about this. This unfortunately is a one star. I would have DNF'd it if this was not a Christmas gift. And I was determined to read it because it was a Christmas gift. I just did not like Anne Rice's writing style. It just dragged for me. She was too detail heavy. I like details, don't get me wrong, but it just, it kind of broke up the flow because she was so busy detailing things for paragraph after paragraph after paragraph that it's just like, okay, get on with it with the story. I feel like if you edit it down a bit, then it would be better, but that was one of my issues. And I am reading the Vampire Lestat right now for February and I'm actually enjoying that one. I also am enjoying Lestat much better. I feel like Louis is just way too whiny of a character for me. But unfortunately the other thing that she seems to be infatuated with is child infatuation and with Lestat familial infatuation. I'm not going to say the words you should know what I mean when I say that. The only saving grace was I loved Claudia's story even though it was very very tragic. So the next book we're going to talk about is Moonrise by MJ Claiborne. This is the fifth book that I read in that crazy week. It is MJ Claiborne's debut novel and because of that I was a little bit more lenient with it. I still got some things to say about this. I did give it 3.5 stars so average a little bit better than average with the 0.5. I liked the story, but unfortunately the writing was, it needed a lot of editing. And also, personal preference, I did not like the main character. So it's kind of hard to read about the main character you don't like, you know? I like the art on this. Every chapter has got art in the front. So I liked the design of the book, I liked the story overall, but there, there are some issues. The reason why I gave it 3.5 stars. The next book that I read was Monster Blood by R.L. Stein. 
the third of the Goosebumps books. I actually gave it 3.5 stars, unlike the three stars I gave Stay Out of the Basement. I'm not sure why I gave it 3.5 stars. I I'm kind of questioning myself on why I gave it 0.5, but oh, I think what it was was the writing was a little bit better in this. I think that's what it was. It wasn't spooky, but it was fascinating. It was more fascinating than the Stay Out of the Basement one. That's the reason why I gave it 0.5 stars. Now I'm remembering. Have you ever, you, you read a book, you write the review and you want to talk about it to people and you just like all, all gone. That's what's happening to me right now. Anyways, the story is what gave the 0.5 stars. I was very fascinated with the story, even though it wasn't spooky. It wasn't spooky to me. It was just interesting. I thought it was going to be a sci-fi. I mean, I guess it was kind of a sci-fi, but the twist at the end was made, what made me give it a 3.5 star. The twist at the end made me just deadpan immediately. I was just like, really? Why? And at this point I was getting worried because now things are hitting average level for Goosebumps. Is it going to continue this? Monster Blood 2 got two stars. And I think I was being generous with that two stars. There are some inconsistencies with sequels. And you'll find that out in the other sequels that I have to talk about. But in this one, it's like they completely retconned the twist, which, you know, to be truthfully honest, it was a terrible twist in the first place. But even if it was a terrible twist in the first place, they probably shouldn't have retconned it. They probably should have just kept it going. And this may be a spoiler, but based on what happened at the end of the Monster Blood, Monster Blood 2 shouldn't have happened at all. Oh, the reason why it gave two stars is because I like the hamster in it. That's the reason why I gave it two stars. It should have been a one star, honestly. Also, I'm starting to learn a pattern with Goosebumps. It's the same formula. There is a male kid and a female kid. Usually the female kid is a bully and annoying and everything else to the male kid. The male kid's usually annoying too, to be truthfully honest. But the female kid is always hounding on the male kid. There's always two bullies. They're constantly in, you know, I guess giving a side conflict for the stories. The only difference is it's a different town and a different spooky element to it. So binge watch, binge watching, binge reading the Goosebumps books, I wouldn't recommend. I wished I had just spaced them out, honestly, so I can kind of forget that that's the formula. Now we will talk about Cur Courier by Zoe Rossi. Rossi? I still can't pronounce her last name. I probably should have asked her. That was a five star for me. It was a short story, but it packed a hell of a punch. There's a lot of story in the short story. If you know about You by, I can't remember the author's name, I'll flash it up, but also the Netflix series of You, which is based on the book, you know, the creepy stalker type of thing. That's basically what The Courier is, is a horror, th a psychological thriller about a stalker who is your courier. But it was really creepy. The way it was written is in I, you, so first and second person, which is very interesting because I've not read a whole lot or any actually of I, you perspective. It's like it was talking to you. So it made it more personal and made it more creepy. The reason why it was five stars. Very well written too, by the way. If you're like me and paranoid about everything, you have even more reason to. <laughs> with this. She was inspired because of the paranoid intrusive thoughts. She was, I think she was watching her courier deliver something and she's like, what if? And then she wrote this. I really want to pick up, I think there's um, one or two other short stories that she's written. I want to pick those up, definitely. And then the next book that I have read was Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Another five star. Absolutely loved this. This has rekindled my love for Neil Gaiman. I really love his writing style. Of course, the only two books I have read by him, actually, I've read three technically, but the two that are ri only written by him were both kids' books. But I still love his writing style. It's very whimsy. It's very creepy. I just absolutely love this. It's got art in the books too. It's by the illustrator Dave McKean. I saw that there is other books of Coraline with other illustrators and I kind of want to collect Coraline books with other illustrations in it now. <laughs> That's how much I like this. I might do that 
at some point. I will be rereading this often. The Graveyard book I want to reread as well. I actually am going to be rereading, buddy reading that one this year. I want to read more of his stuff. I want to read stuff that's obviously not children's books. Um, American Gods, I do believe, has been recommended to me. The Sandman has been re recommended to me, the graphic novels. I have sh the short stories of The Sandman. I don't have the beginning of The Sandman and it was recommended I not read the short stories and read the beginning. I did watch the TV series of The Sandman so I don't know if it's anything different but. So the next book we're going to talk about is Diary of A.S. by A.C. Crown. It is another short story. This one is literally 19 pages long. It's very short but in that time I was sucked into the story and the ending was very, very, very unexpected. It is a gothic horror kind of feel to it. I would recommend it. The only gripe I have is it was too short. I got sucked into the story and then it was over. I really wished it was longer. I do believe he's got one other short story. He did say it was nothing like Diary of A.S. but I liked it so much I'm really curious about his other stories. So I will be picking up his other story later on. I gave it 4.5 stars. It's on Kindle Unlimited, I do believe, still. So if you want to read a really quick 19 page story, then pick it up and see what I mean about the ending. The last three books are going to be all Goosebumps. So the first one is Say Cheese and Die, which I actually have a physical copy of. I have a tin that's got like five books. so. I want to collect the other ones even if I don't like them. I kind of still want to collect them just to have. But Say Cheese and Die was a four star for me. So the series kind of elevated back up. I was really really relieved after Monster Blood 2 kind of fell flat for me. This again got the spooky elements like Welcome to Dead House, just not as much as Welcome to Dead House, but there was definitely a lot of spooky elements in this. The writing was okay. Seemed to have fallen into a writing pattern. When they're writing chapters at the end, they start getting really repetitive to kind of drag it out and then cut you off, cliffhanger you, so you can turn the page to the next chapter to know what's going on. So you get the whole will they, won't they type of thing, which causes the repetitiveness before you move on. It grates on my nerves. I don't like that. So that's the reason why this got four stars for me because of the writing and just the formula is just driving me nuts. But overall I did really like this. So of the ones that I've read so far I would recommend Say Cheese and Die and Welcome to Dead House of all of them. But unfortunately the next book that I read is Say Cheese and Die again. It is a sequel. And again, there's some continuity problems. Actually, no, not continuity problems. Stupidity problems. That's what's going on in this one. The kids don't remember what happened in the first one, even though that was literally a summer ago, and are doing the same stupid things with the camera. Why? Just to have a sequel? Like, I don't understand. I don't... I can't. I can't with the stupidity. I understand there's like a level of stupidity that you kind of need in order for these things to happen, in order for you to discover, you know, the conflicts. But this was just way too much for me. And there is actually some retconning in it too, because, or maybe it's just him being stupid, but there is a moment in the first one where he discovers a trick with the camera. I won't say more than that, but he discovers a trick with the camera and he completely blanks that that's something that you can do for this one. It was a two star for me. I did not like it. And again, this is the second of the sequels that I didn't like. So I'm starting to think that I'm not going to like any of the sequels of any of the books. But that's actually not true because the next book that I read is, I forgot the title, The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. It got a two star for me. The first book. And I think I was being very generous. I think I was being generous for Say Cheese and Die again too. I think both of these should have been a one star, honestly. I guess it's just feeling star happy. The writing in this was atrocious. <laughs> it's the same, like I said, the same repetitiveness that I've mentioned that 
seems to be stuck on, it got worse in this one. I actually, halfway through the book, I literally stopped reading and just read the dialect and like skimmed the pages just to get the gist. I'm reading currently the second one, The Return of the Mummy, I think is the title of it. I'm actually really enjoying that one. Now that book is number 23, I think, of the series. We kind of jumped in order to read the second one of The Mummies. The writing is really, really good in that one. And there's barely any repetitiveness. So it's like he learned for this one. So I think I'm getting, unless something stupid happens in this, I think I may be giving it like four stars. Who knows? So it kind of flip-flopped there. The first two series, Monster Blood 1 and 2 and Say Cheese and Die 1 and 2, the sequel was always two stars. Should have been one star. Whereas this one, the first one was two stars. Should have been one star. And the second one I'm actually enjoying a lot better. You'll see in uh, February whether or not that remains truthful for that one. And that is all of them. That is all the books that I read. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be reading for February, Balloween celebrating, I'm going to be reading romance books, dark. Well actually the two books that I have that are romance that are on my TBR shelf are both young adult romance. But they are still, they're still dark. It's like witches and witch hunters and stuff. So I'll be reading those two and I'll be reading Dracula and Frankenstein. Plus I have a bunch of arcs I need to read, which are all horror, as I have mentioned before. Though I read a lot of genres, most of it's spooky stuff. Let me talk about this really briefly because I pulled it down. The short story that we read in January is The Telltale Heart of Poe. It's like one of my favorites of his between that and The Raven, which I know is pretty pretty standard for a lot of people who like Poe. We are going to be reading The Pit and the Pendulum for February, so. Which I don't remember. I've read this cover to cover, so I have read it before, but off the top of my head I don't remember what that one's about, so it'll be interesting for me to start reading this and see if I can remember what it's actually about. Don't tell me. I want to see if I can remember. But yeah, that is it. That is my January wrap up of my 14 books that I read. Um, I will be doing this again at the end of February and continue to do it, kind of like I'm doing my movie and TV show. So those two you'll be seeing every month unless I don't watch or read anything for the month. Next week I am going to do something different. I'm going to do a resurrect craft with me. It's going to be a lot of, probably a lot of b-roll of me crafting and music over top of it because I also want to finish It by Stephen King. I have got like nine hours to go on that one so I figure I could read like an hour of or listen to an hour of It while I'm doing crafts and you can be my accountability buddies when it comes to resurrecting my projects because I've got a lot of projects I have started and did not finish so I'm going to try that for next week and see if I can make progress on my craft and finish It by Stephen King. So be looking forward to that. Until then, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye souls.